This is our sixth annual meeting of Northampton Community Television under its current um, governance uh, model, which is an independent 501c3 organization um, prior to this NCTV and its, and its iteration before this was run by the cable provider in Northampton. Um, so we've been in business here like this since 2006. 2007 was our grand opening in, in November of 2007, so six years from them, approximately to today. Um, and we're really pleased with what we've been able to accomplish, and a big part of that is everyone here, right? Um, it's the membership, and, and really when we make decisions as an organization, we're trying to make them so that you utilize this as a resource, right? That's our goal. If we're not being used, we're not doing our work well. So we keep trying to come up with new ways of doing that. Um, we change things around quite often um, from year to year, and um, always, you know, you're always, we're always here to, to answer any questions you have. So reach out to us, whatever you're doing, and let us know what you want out of this organization, which is your organization, our organization. Um, you have an annual report in front of you. There's a larger version of this that you'll see online on Monday. It'll be on our website. It's 85 pages long, so I thought maybe that would be a lot of paper to waste. So you have a 12-page, I think, version of this in front of you right now, which is the key points. What you're not missing in here is some of the detailed financials, which will be up there. You can see all of our financial records from every year we've been in existence on our website and also on GuideStar if you want to look there. Um, and also like a list of all the programs we've run is not in this. Um, what else? Our rules, whoa. Oh, yeah. The microphone is working somewhere. <laughs> our, rules, our rules and policies are also um, not in this document. They're available online. They haven't changed since last year. Okay. So um, some key points from the past year. Good. Sounds really good right now to me. That's the sign out there for everyone. Yeah. So um, here, the key points from the past year is just sort of some highlights of what's happened at Northampton Community Television in 2013, actually since um, our last annual meeting, which was October of 2012. Okay. Uh, we won our second consecutive national award for best website in the United States for community media, uh, budget under $300,000. And that's pretty cool. We really like that. Um, huge props to all of our staff who support that website and also Jeremy Whalen who left Northampton Community Television. He's venturing across South America as we speak. Um, and he was a real loss. We, we have our new employee, Ian Bauer. Where is Ian? There's Ian. <laughs> Ian Bauer is our new project coordinator. I'd like to introduce him. And Ian's been with us since September and he's doing a great job. Fantastic job. Our team is amazing here. Our staff is amazing. You know that if you if you work with us on a day to day basis, how great this team is. And um, I can't do half of what I, not even a quarter of what I could do without these guys. So they're, they're amazing. We have Jen Ramsey, who's our media resources coordinator, and Dave Newman, who's our production coordinator. That's our staff. Um, so we, we, in 2013, we won uh, our second consecutive best website award. I also note that it's for our other website. We have two websites we run, NorthamptonTV.org and ParadiseCityPress.org. So we won NorthamptonTV.org last year and we won ParadiseCityPress.org this year. And that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So we're really happy about that. We also were told that we came within a fraction of points. I don't know, that doesn't really make sense. A few points of winning best station in the United States for a PEG facility. Okay. Wow. PEG meaning public education and government access. It came in second, pre second place to another outfit in Massachusetts, but we were really happy to get that close. Um, so we're, we're excited about that. Um, <clears throat> I had the honor of also accepting an award, um, the Brian Wilson Award. It's a regional award for mentorship in community media. Um, that happened this last month um, and attended uh, what's called the National Leadership Institute for the National Association of Media Arts and Culture, which is a grant funded program by the Warhol Foundation and Ford Foundation. Um, so that's sort of our, our recognition that we receive nationally across the country and community media. Uh, we launched the production grants program and we're going to be announcing the results of that this November 1st is our target date. Um, we have a committee who's going to be looking, we've received 18, 17 or 18 depending on how you count. So one of the applications applied for two different grants. Um, these production grant programs, we're giving out $5,000 this year to help people create short films. Um, it, it's, it's part of our mission. If you think about what we do here is we fund resources for people to create things. So this is kind of like a micro direct experiment of what it is we do. We're, we're, giving, we're funding films, right? So we're bringing in uh, creative um, media makers into our space and encouraging them to be compensated for doing some creative work in community work. 
Um, this is our first year of doing that. We've also launched Cinema Northampton this year. Tonight, um, Ghostbusters, if you like Ghostbusters, it's showing in the football field out here tonight. Um, it's our second installment of outdoor film screenings. The first one was The Princess Bride two months ago. Uh, we're talking about, we talked today about something in December in the cold, it's a big short. Uh, <laughs> Eve about peanuts, right? Peanuts Christmas, which I think is really, seems like a good idea, maybe in Luke Park, okay? So Cinema Northampton is something we'd like to move around the community and just invite people to interact with us in a number of different ways. But also, um, that, that project also raises money for other nonprofits. The Booster Club is selling concessions, so 100% of all revenues generated by those concessions go to Booster Club. So we get to help the community in that way as well and market ourselves. Um, we launched an initiative to outfit five public meeting rooms in Northampton. You might have seen this in the Gazette in the past couple of weeks. So what we're doing is we're installing camera systems in five different government meeting spaces. The committees who meet in those rooms are going to be responsible for recording, hitting record, and stopping record. So we hope that works, right? <laughs> um, we think we've, we've tried to make it as simple as possible. And the idea here is really to increase transparency in city government. Um, you may have noticed some stories right here in Holyoke. There was some, there was a big, big press lately about some, some city councilors who were, um, had some controversy because of uh, comments that they, they aired, okay, over community media. But um, this is an initiative actually the city council has encouraged us to do. So they're, they're behind us, which is really important. Um, East Hampton went through this, this project as well recently in the past years, and, um, and they had some, <clears throat> it wasn't necessarily hand in hand with the municipality, but the municipality of Northampton has encouraged us to do this. So we're pretty excited about that. It's a lot of content, and Dave's gonna be paying up in the meetings, by the way, as we put all that together. We've seen dramatic rise in usage and exposure of the station. We've continually through the years, this has happened to us, our Facebook likes went from uh, 908 likes to 2013. That's more than most major municipal community media centers. So we have really good uh, Facebook traffic. Our Twitter followers went from 307 to 497. Our video on demand plays averaged just over 1,000 a week. It was 900 a week last year in 2012 and 1,000 a week this year. Uh, we have, you'll see some, stat, some stats here. We have three YouTube channels. That's why it looks, those numbers look crazy there. Um, According to Webalizer, we had two million hits, over two million hits on our website last year, and on the Paradise City Press site, one, over 1.4 million hits in the last four months. So we had a lot of traffic. Um, we had a large year of outreach, um, sending staff to NAB, N10, NATOA, AMAC, and ACM events. Okay, these are all media arts organizations across the United States. Robin spoke to keeping in touch with National Pulse, and that's what these things represent. These groups deal with different aspects of what we do as community media centers. <clears throat> Matoe, for instance, is, uh, focuses on government uh, municipal access and government coverage. Um, N10 is a nonprofit technology organization. So, so we, we really, um, for us, it's about, it's about having a very broad view of what community media is and then trying to sort of uh, raise the bar for everyone, including ourselves. We installed a new Telview server. Um, our old server was about five years old, six years old. And um, that's about the lifetime of a server, so we, we timed it very well, and this is allowing us to program all three channels. We earned our third channel last year. Um, Jen Ramsey programs that Teleview server. I shouldn't point that out, because so you're gonna <laughs> complain to her now. But um, the Teleview server is, uh, is where we're work we've had it installed for a couple of months now, and uh, it's working well. It's gonna increase our productivity in a couple of ways. We'll have better reporting, so next year's annual report, you'll have, a, you'll have more detailed reports, um, numbers and metrics that you can look at and see how we're doing. Um, we began a very fruitful, fruitful partnership with the Chamber of Commerce. We did a series of videos promoting the Chamber and informational videos to membership, to Chamber membership. And we've actually received some rental business because of that. We've, our profile in the business community has grown this year. And a big part of that is because of our relationship with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and then uh, we've been building collaborations. Collaboration building is a big part of what we do. So some of our partners have been Cantor Gazette, Valley Free Radio, New England Public Radio, Pioneer Valley Maker Group, um, I don't know if any of you are, are familiar with the maker movement, but there is our maker spaces being created in the Pioneer Valley. I'll, if you're interested, I'll talk to you about what that is after, after today. But we're, <clears throat> we're watching them closely because we qualify as a maker space, okay, community media center. Western Mass Film and Video Makers Group, the Massachusetts Production Coalition, of which we're the only community <coughs> media center that is a member. These are filmmakers and broadcast professionals in Massachusetts. And Bridging the Gap, which is a youth organization in Holyoke. <clears throat> Holyoke doesn't have community media currently, or sort of has half of a community media center. 
Um, and so we've we've worked with that. Those youth have come to North Hampton and we've been able to, to accommodate them inside of our own capacity here. Um, the next, uh, next section of the report shows you programming and membership. Historically, we've had 174 new members this year. We've had 657 members through our six-year period, 237 which are active in this last year. Um, 181 class signups. Um, below that, you see days of producer equipment use. So what this represents, a day of equipment use is one camera checkout. So if you, can, you check out a camera for a weekend, that's a day of equipment use, okay? I mean, even though it's three days. But we, we qualify that as a day. If you come in and you edit, and you sit down and you edit, that's a day of equipment use. If, if you have 10 people come in and shoot something in the studio, that's a day of equipment use. So that's what these numbers represent. In 2008, our first year, we had 155 days. And you'll see those numbers as you turn the pages. There's a huge spike in 2012, we hit 1817, okay? And this year, 2,171 days of equipment. Okay, that is, we're, we're, we're at capacity, <laughs> I would say. Well, from 155 in 2008 to 2,171. We're really, that's, I think, the most proud number that we have to show uh, for this organization. Um, there, in terms of programming, there were 732 productions. That number is a little misleading because half of those are fish time, which is our live <laughs> fish tank show. So it's, it averages about one a day, really. Those are local productions. That means someone might have shot something with a camera of ours or, and edited it at home or shot something on their camera and edited it here or done all of it here. But if anyone utilizes our facility in any way as a resource, we call that you know, a, a local originated production. Um, other programs, 1,367 uh, productions, okay? Al, yes. say a little bit more about the fish. The fish, oh yeah, so the story of the fish, if you, if you aren't familiar with the fish, fish time, um, the history behind that is when Northampton signed a contract with Comcast originally in 2006, 2007, um, we were granted two channels. And part of that contract required that we have meet certain programming requirements to get a third channel. That was um, about eight hours of programming, five days a week for six months. And, and by that I mean non-repetitive non programming. So locally created, from scratch, original programming, non-repeat, not including, let's say, non-alphanumeric, which means no bulletin board. Okay, that's more programming than really like ESPN does. And if you watch SportsCenter, it's a loop show. Right? I mean, they show Sports Center. I don't know, 25 times a day, something like that, and it's a loop show. There's really not much original content on it in that in those hours of Sports Center, and so um, that's a lot of content to create. So we decided to point a camera at Fish Tank as a production, as our show. And we met that requirement, got our third channel last year. There was some debate as to whether that qualified as programming, but in the end, um, it turns out it did. And so we've got that third channel, which represents real estate. It's bandwidth for us. We have three channels now, um, and we fill them. Yeah. Um, so that's the fish tank. People like it. We have people here today who came because they saw the sign in the fish tank. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, Dave Newland had put a sign in our fish tank just a couple of days ago advertising the meeting, and I think it's going to be an ongoing. It's going to be. If you have something to put in the fish tank, talk to Dave. That's, that's alphanumeric. That's that. That is background. That's a sort of wallpaper. Um, so but you know the fish never do the same thing twice. <laughs> Unlike a sports tank. It's a great shot if you see it of that, that the um, Dave's you know graffiti in the fish tank and then a large fish is coming. Cool. Um, so that's our fish tank. That's fish tank. Um, we continue to run it. We get some Facebook posts about it too about how their people watch it with their cats. <laughs> um, uh, fiscal reporting, as I mentioned, you'll see financials come out. Those will all be posted Monday, uh, year to date, and then we repost them at the end of the year as well. Um, as well as equipment purchases that we've made. Um, uh, our fundraising dollars were raised $3,323 through, through, through grants that are not part of our the revenues we raised through the city's contract um, with the cable provider, Comcast, in our, in our sense. Um, our, our rules and policies as well, those are posted online, you can see those. Uh, currently, then you'll see a number of pages of feedback. What we do is when we get feedback from people, I tag it um, in an email, and then we, we generally take, this is most of it, really. And you'll see there's good comments and bad comments here. We like to show all of them. Um, we're not embarrassed about our mistakes. We're a little embarrassed about our mistakes. But 
Um, there, it's all in here. Um, and then there's a summary on page nine of sort of just some general things that people tell us in our day-to-day -day lives about kinds of feedback we get. Um, there's a high expectation as to the reliability and ease of use of our website. So we have a good website, we're proud of our website. When you have a good website, people expect you to always have a good website. So if something goes wrong with it, we hear about it pretty quickly in terms of like a program guide sometimes is not displaying right, um, et cetera. So, so sometimes when that breaks down, people notice immediately, um, especially because they have high web traffic. There are a lot of people we encounter in the community who don't have television, who are cord cutters or cord nevers, right? And um, so those people still interact with us. And that's part of our mission here because we exist because of public right away, right? The, the public owns the land that the, that the cable provider is using to generate private income. And that's why this facility is funded as part of that exchange. But so that public land is yours whether you subscribe to cable publisher or not, right? So we serve the whole public. Um, and people use us who don't have TV at all, certainly. Uh, people regularly comment on quality of programming here, we, that we have very high quality programming. Part of that is we have, we, we like good technology and new technology, and we're always trying to make sure we keep the bar high in terms of what's available for you to produce with. Um, we get those comments from professionals. We had the, um, the film festival folks in the other day who were, who commented about how our content looks, you know, it is very advanced for community looks good so we're we try to we try to accomplish two things one the ability to create high quality programming and also ease of use so everyone can use so we have easy to use cameras and we have high quality cameras we try to hit all those points at the same time um, we hear about democracy now and government meetings immediately whenever there are problems with those people do watch those on television there's a dedicated audience there and so we hear when something goes wrong with those with those airings we hear about them uh, usually from <coughs> one person frequently um, our interns have given us a lot of good feedback in the last year. Um, as to their experiences here, they've interned at other uh, either broadcast facilities, other community media institutions, and they consistently tell us that um, they enjoy our program better. Maybe they're just saying that, but I'm going to repeat it anyway because uh, they are saying it. So we're happy about that. Um, we have pretty regular flow of, in of interns who come through our facility. There's 30 of them that were with us this year. Okay, and. Um, and we have pretty good word of mouth when we ask interns how they found out about us. There are a lot of different ways, but one of those ways is from previous interns. Okay, so there's a story being told about us, and we're happy about that. Um, there's an increased flow of requests from the community to cover events. This is always something that, that we mention every year, and, and these requests become larger and larger every year. As we do more and more work, more people are aware of us, which in turn creates more requests. Um, and uh, we, you know, we're pretty, we're at capacity, as I mentioned. Staff works very, really hard here, and um, so we, we rely on volunteers a lot to, do, to cover those events. So I'd like to mention that, that we do get a lot of requests for those, and we try to do the work that we can, you know, we can manage to do. Al, let me just add yeah. one quick thing to that. Um, I've been asked, when I introduce myself as being involved with NCTV, people often say, well, why, do, why doesn't NCTV cover this or that? And they ask in a way that, indicates that their conception of the station is that it's a public service to the to the city of Northampton. It is, of course, a public service to the city. But my answer to people who make those kinds of who ask those kinds of questions is um, you need to join the station, take the course, learn to run the equipment, and produce the show. That's the way public media work. It's not that Al and his staff go out and, and produce a, a, a civic-minded production. Of course, they do sometimes, but there's a sharp limit to how much of that they can do. <coughs> so when people ask you that, um, I think that's a good answer to come back with. You know, It's up to you or your friends to get together with a group and do it if you want to produce a certain a certain. Uh, public event. And we're happy to welcome you and train you to do that and also do a lot of handholding. So we, we, we're very, I, I think I mentioned before, but we're very results oriented. So if you have an idea of something you want to produce, come talk to us and we'll figure out a way to get you, get you on track to where you If you're, if you're utilizing us, that's, that's what we do. Right? So, um, so please don't be shy about that. 
Um, staffing and intern changes, I've also I've, I've referenced in previous comments. Uh, Jeremy Whalen has been replaced with Ian Bauer. Ian's, from, Ian's background is from Connecticut School of Broadcasting, and then was a volunteer in community media in Greenfield and became was hired on staff in Greenfield Community <coughs> We stole him. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> the director there, Scott, <coughs> accused me of stealing him. So, um, and, and Ian also is a managing partner in Cairo Media, right? It's a multimedia company, independent multimedia company as well. Um, so we're happy to have it. Um, we've had 30 interns who are all listed out here in 2013. Um, and if you move forward to page 11, this is a rough outline of our annual plan and vision moving forward in 2013. We will have weekend hours starting November 9th, okay? Is our first Saturday. We will be open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturdays from now on. Um, we're going to see what kind of usage we have, and hopefully people utilize those hours. I know people have requested this, and we've been, um, we hope to implement this in this year, and we are. It took us till November, but we will be opening the Saturday, November 9th, and we, we will be open every Saturday, almost every Saturday, some holidays in the with um, we're looking uh, at our workflow. Robin mentioned our uh, request or the fact that people need to volunteer and that's sort of how we work. Um, content is created by the public and we facilitate that and I've mentioned the work capacity so we're, we're going to be looking at our workflow moving forward just because um, our demand is increasing and that means we just sort of, we need to rethink how this did, how well, the, you know, how to run the station well and as efficiently as we can so we're accommodating as much traffic as, as we get. Um, so that'll be an important thing. Staff will start sitting down the next couple of months and look at how all of that works. So you may see some changes. We'll solicit feedback from membership, and um, it should all be for the better. Um, technology rebuild. We've been shooting. You'll, you'll notice that both Jen and Ian are running DSLRs. These are cameras. Most of most of what we shoot now are on these DSLR cameras. Um, they're high def. They do great in low light. Beautiful images. Um, because we're so happy with the quality of these cameras, we've gotten away from using these cameras. Which are studio cameras. Okay, these are standard definition, and they're more of a traditional multi-camera studio tool. But um, we don't like using them because they're not as pretty. Okay, basically is what it comes down to. And so um, we'll, we'll be looking at rebuilding the control room. It'll be our third control room rebuild. We do this a lot, um, and installing a high definition system in here that are using utilizing cameras similar to these KSLRs. They're, they're a hybrid between the cameras Ian's running here and the one right next to him. So something between those two will be what we're, we're looking to install in the next year. We're also looking to install robotic systems in, in the city council chambers. So some HD upgrades in the facility um, you'll see happening in the next year. Um, collaboration. Uh, it's really important for us to, to really focus on partnerships. One thing we've done, we've, we've filed a grant application with Greenfield Community Television and Amherst Media to pay stringers to do citizen journalism stories for Paradise City Press. So we're seeing if this is a viable, grantable solution. That's one example of collaborating. You know, moving forward, what we're trying to do, and, and I, this sort of leads into to a later point in the plan, um, as you may have noticed, tell them that the multimedia industry is changing quite dramatically. Um, so no one's really sure how content is gonna be distributed, where it's gonna be distributed, who's gonna make it, and how they're gonna get paid. Um, so you have Hulu and Netflix and cable TV and broadcast TV and pirated free internet sites and um, no one knows how it's going to shake out. Nobody in the industry knows and there's a lot of bets being made by various groups. Um, we have to be aware of that for ourselves, for what we do as public media. So we're, what we don't want to be is an organization that is, um, that is beholden to a model that used to work. We want to be looking for a model that will be working in the future and anticipating it. And what we'd really like to do is, when these changes happen, what we want to be fulfilling is our mission, right? We want to be providing resources for the community, for the public, uh, to give voice and to empower. And so as long as we're doing that, what our structure is can be anything, okay? So that, that our mission is more important than our structure for us. And so, um, I'm rambling a little here. So, uh, so we want, when, when those changes occur, we want to be a working model so that whoever the decision makers are can point to us and say, look, that's working. What they're doing is working. So let's support that. Because people want to support the things that are already working. So we want to be shovel ready for the future. Okay, that's why we're continually looking for partners. Um, nonprofit partners, media partners, people who create content, anything that peripherally pertains to our mission as a community space, as a space for creation, for expression, as a modern library, that's what we want to be doing. Um, 
Okay, so we're looking for those collaborations and partnerships. We sort of, in the past five years, we've gotten the machine that is the organization up and rolling, and it's running now. Um, and, and the staff, again, they're the people who run it, and it's great. They're it's fantastic. And so I, I just want to reiterate that over and over again. Um, but um, we can now start to look towards you know, that vision of working and expanding those partnerships in the community. So that's a big part of what we're going to be doing moving forward. We also have a contract negotiation that the city will be going through. That's another point. That will be a big issue this year. So everyone in this room I'll, will be inviting you to appear at a public hearing at some point. Um, we've built those collaborations that we've, we've made in the past, those partners that we have, the people who've utilized us. Um, the payoff for us is they can come and speak to the value of our organization or the disappointment in our organization should they choose to do so. But the fact is to voice their opinion, and, and those those vocalizations are what help the community, the municipality, negotiate a contract to fund an organization like this. So moving forward, this year we're starting that process. It takes two and a half years, okay? So it's slow because these are large, large, you know, slow-moving, somewhat clumsy bureaucracies, and so that's how it works. And so you will be hearing from us. Um, revisiting our rules and policies. This was a goal we had for 2012 that we did not get to because we've been so busy. So we carry these things forward. Usually we have one or two items that we move forward from the previous year that we didn't get to, and this is one of them. We need to look at those rules and policies documents, and also our bylaws, frankly. We'll need to do some revisions around those because they were written five or six years ago, and um, they haven't been looked at. So they don't necessarily reflect the reality of who we are anymore. So we're gonna look to clean those up. That'll be something we'll do too, and we'll reach out to membership for those, because some of those may require a vote of membership. Um, and then just ongoing, Yearly goals, this is something we add to every report. Um, just about extending outreach to the entire community, creating a wider and fuller network of producers and partners, uh, increasing access to our facility in terms of physical limitations and fairness and policy. We, can, we seek to continually expand programming produced by staff, interns, volunteers, and most of all NT, NCTV membership. We strive to be a results-driven, flexible organization that meets the ongoing needs of the constituency, which is the community. That's our plan. Um, any questions? Does anyone have any questions or points to raise? Yes. Yeah, just. I was just curious um, why you think the use of equipment has increased so dramatically in the last year. Well, there's a couple of reasons. I mean, one of it is one of them is interns, right? So that's some of the traffic. Also. I think that we're, we have more exposure. I think there's just more, there's more awareness of us in the community. Um, there are a lot of ways we try to bring people into our doors. You'd be surprised how many people in the school, like we, we, we share the building with the high school. There are a lot of high school students who don't know who we, who have no idea who we are, believe it or not. We're in the, um, they call us the basement, right? And so there's people who never go in the basement because this is, this is a tech wing and they have culinary arts as well. And if you don't take any tech programs or culinary arts, there's no reason for you to come down here. And so you don't wander through this in your daily travels as a high school student. And we, we do outreach, but it's really about bringing people through the door. People who find the space, they think we're great. Because when they see it, and we try to have like a good, a good feeling about the space, right? That's one of our goals too. We think that being comfortable is an important part of being a community space as well. And so um, it's about getting people through the door. Uh, we also, the business community, we have more exposure with them. We've also had more exposure with people who are um, professional videographers, okay, who may do this work, like they're free, they do freelance work, they could be designers, they could be camera operators, they could be producers. Um, they do work with us in their spare time like for fun. Um, and so they, we've gotten a good reputation with them. And part of that, honestly, the DSLR is a big, huge part of it for both the professional group, but also for younger people too. Because if you're, you know, if you're 16, um, these cameras, this is an $800 camera, okay? It shoots better image than a, than a $10,000 camera, okay? Like you could buy a $10,000 camera today that will not have as good imaging as this $800 camera. So if you're 15, you probably know that. And if you come into a facility and you don't, you're not supporting that kind of technology, why would you wanna, why would you wanna participate? So we, we wanna, so stay relevant. You know, coming in and, and giving people who want to create equipment that's not that's not obsolete. I think that's been a big part of it too. And the web traffic. Okay. So 
Um, we do a lot of marketing. We do more marketing than most community media organizations. What our marketing budget is pretty significant. And we advertise in the paper, we advertise on Facebook, we take out Google ads, we are on TV, radio, print, all of those things. And so that's that's what part that's where running a business is, right? So if you ask, I'm ranting a little here too, but if you ask most community media organizations, and even I identified it, right, that people don't know who we are. That's one of the first things that people can say usually about these kinds of organizations. Well, the problem is that we're not, our visibility isn't what it should be then, right? So we're targeting the obvious. And it's amazing, like, um, not everyone does that, but we're aware of that and trying to be, trying to address that. Yeah? When do you do the training? Our trainings, our classes, Monday evenings, virtually every Monday, most Mondays, we have a training. So our current lineup for workshops it's a la carte. So we have, we have a citizen journalism class Monday. Um, Dan Crowley of the Gazette will be here talking about journalism. And we will take people through the back end of the citizen journalism website, Paradise City Press. And then we have a DSLR training. We have a it's cinematography is the name of the, it, our, our fundamental course is now called cinematography and that's sort of essentials, just production essentials. Then the DSLR training is a separate course. We have a lighting course, an audio workshop. We have editing workshops and After Effects workshops on Thursday nights, not every Thursday night, uh, when we don't have city council or school community meetings. So about once, maybe twice a month, we have After Effects training or editing training. Beyond that, if you can't make a Monday night or a Thursday night, we'll set up a one-on-one. -on -one. But to be a part of the community, you do have to train on all those, or? Nope. You just need to train on what you're using. So the trainings are really one to familiarize you with the, with the equipment, right? And there's some liability that we want you to tell understand. I mean, if I wanted to be a part of the community, but yeah. I can know pretty much all those things. You, then you just come in and we'll, we do what we call a test out. Okay. And it's kind of an eyeball test. We'll hand you a camera and if, if it's clear you know what you're doing, you know, we don't want to waste either of our time, right? right? Uh, we'd rather not have to train you if you're trained, really. <laughs> so, um, and we do a lot of like, and these are general courses, right? We give an audio course, it's two hours. You know how much audio you can learn in two hours? 1%, I don't know, you know I mean? Not, like, so we, we, we take speaking generalities. This is some people's full careers, right? We're not turning into like, you know, a, a, a master audio engineer in two hours. But we're, what we want to do is help you understand the fundamentals. And then when you have a project, we'll talk to you. Like, we'll show you, oh, you should use this microphone or that microphone, or here are your options. So we'd rather do it that way. We think it's more efficient. So we'll do that, too. We do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah? Um, I'm sorry. Oh, hi. I, I just wanted to say, my name is Robin Kulbeck, and I'm on the Cable Advisory Board. And we will be negotiating the contract with Comcast. And what we need is for people to come to us and tell us what they want for you know, NCTV and how we can help the community. And the more input we get, the better we'll know what to ask Comcast for and how to negotiate. So I wanted to put that out there. Yeah, and it's and we'll do some messaging. We'll let you know what you could say too. For instance, high definition channels. Do you want to? We want to. We. I mean. I want a high definition channel. <laughs> okay, I don't know about anyone else, but in t 2025. And to not have a high definition channel, are you? That seems a little absurd, right? You can't even buy. You can't buy cameras that shoot in standard definition anymore. We have to actually down convert our programming to air over television. Okay, for example. But if the community doesn't ask for a high definition channel, then the cable company will say, "Well, no one asked for it." Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why localizing those things specifically. We'll and we'll we'll say you could say this. We're not going to tell you what to say. It's not our role to tell the community what to say. Our role is to is to is to be, you know, to honor the community and can be caretakers and also inform you of what kind of choices are out there, but not to make those choices for you, just to be clear. Um, so, but yeah, those are, we, we, we rely on those voices. Also, written, you can submit written testimony too. That's pretty cool, right? That's almost better, because uh, you can really think about it. Um, other questions, comments? So, two quick things. One, we have t-shirts for sale. As Robin mentioned, these are the men's version. There are women's versions too. Jen's got one. Jen Ramsey's showing the Northampton Community Television. Um, so we have a Paradise City Press shirt. 
And we've got a Northampton Community Television shirt, all sorts of sizes, $15 a piece. So if you're interested in buying that, see Jen at some point. Also, by Jen is a green screen and a bunch of props. If you'd like, we're gonna roll a camera on that and key you out later. And we have some, some uh, script we'd like you to say, and that is, I'm Al Williams, and I am Northampton Community Television, right? So just a little promo um, that you can that you can cut for us. So on your way before you leave, I'd like to ask you to go in front of that screen and, and give us a shout out like that. There's a script on the teleprompter there for you. Um, last but not least, every year we award a producer of the year award, um, and this was a pretty easy choice for us this year. And our producer of the year, who's here, is Benjamin Bradley Gilbert, and <laughs> uh, he's been with us. It's his second home, as his mom says, <laughs> right? Um, it's something I, I think um, he's looking to pursue professionally as a career, and he's gonna, I was mentioning to Robin earlier that um, I'm gonna work for him one day. And he's really, he's doing amazing work, and when he gets, he's, he's gonna be four years ahead of everyone in college when he gets there, at least, in terms of what he knows how to do. Um, makes great content, you can see it online, and it's been an honor to have him here, and so, um, Edgeman Brown Gilbert, we've got a little something for you for being pretty soon. Um, that's about it. Any other questions or comments from anyone? Oh yes. Do your fish have names? <laughs> the, the little white one is named Jeremy. The little white one's <laughs> I didn't even know that. There's um That one was born right around when you left. That was born right around. Yeah, they have had reproduced, which is pretty cute. We were worried about them surviving, but they had reproduced. They don't really have names. Though we were calling one, um, we were calling one Hannah. Somebody called in the middle of the night one night about it, like at four o'clock in the morning. It was a very interesting phone call. Uh, named Hannah, so we were calling one Do of them Hannah for one. Do they need names? Do you think they need I think them? The big one needs <laughs> we could have a contest. Though. We could, or you know, you could. I mean, do you want to name them? Get an idea? Don't let her. No one else is volunteering. This is how we get things done. So we'll talk after. Maybe we'll talk about anything. We'll talk about the other fish gaming committee. You want to get the fish gaming committee? The chair of the fish gaming committee. Yeah. We should introduce the board, especially our new members. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much for reminding me. Um, we we do have election results in, and our we have two board members, one new and one previous board member. Barbara Golden uh, is elected this year as a, to serve another term on the board. And uh, I'd like to introduce Mary Alice Krim as well, who is our newest board member. Um, Mary Alice works at Free Press. Um, if you're not familiar with Free Press, I encourage you to be familiar with Free Press. They're located in Washington, D.C. and Northampton. Um, there are two headquarters. It was, the organization was started in Northampton. They are a very um, forward-thinking media advocacy organization. So they, they're involved with a lot of the stuff that we like to be involved with in terms of our broad vision of what our mission is. Um, so things like um, broadband access, net neutrality is one of the biggest issues for free press, okay? So those are, those. if you're interested in media, that's that's a, a great place to look, a great willingness to join. I'm plugging free press up here for you, but, um, <laughs> and you're the events coordinator, the events and? Uh, engagement and events director. Engagement and events director, sorry. So at free press, um, they're a great partner. We've we've collaborated with them in terms of productions in the past, um, and it's really great to have them in our community here in Northampton. And uh, Mary Alice is a great advocate, a great asset to the board, um, with a great understanding of the various issues that are that are sort of um, at at play right now in the multimedia world, telecommunications world. Um, other board members, we've got Howard Moore. From school committee, um, Kate Way, Robin Barber, and Henry White, our Northampton Community Television Board Director. How about a hand? They don't usually eat this well. <laughs> it's true. We don't have any food at our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a new trend. That's right. Um, other questions, comments? Thank you very much for showing up. Oh, Dave. You want to roll the highlight reel? Let's roll the highlight reel. Let me do it. You can do it. I know where it is. Oh, you know where it is? So what Dave's going to be playing for you here is our 2013 highlight reel, composed of a number of different productions that we've done in 2013.
2013. That's our desktop.